Hey filmmakers, today we're comparing the Atomos Ninja V to the small HD focus monitor. And I'm gonna break down all the specs and things that make them similar and different. That way you can make an educated decision about which one is best for you. At first glance, these both just look like five inch monitors, but there are actually a lot of differences between them. Let's start off with the cost and what you actually get in the box when you buy one. So the Atomos Ninja V at the time of filming this is $700. And all you get in the box is the monitor itself and then a battery eliminator so that you can plug it directly into DC power. It also comes with an SSD caddy but it's just the caddy itself, a plastic empty shell. So you actually still have to buy an SSD, which are about $200 for the 500 gigabyte. And it just goes up from there. If you get another brand like the Samsung and you want it to stick off when you're using the caddy, you can get SSDs for much cheaper. Other than that, nothing else comes in the box, no mounting accessories, no HDMI cables or anything like that. When you purchase a small HD focus monitor, their base model is $500 and it does come with this nice tilt arm. Now, the other things it comes with is their proprietary small HD micro HDMI cable and a micro HDMI adapter cable so you can go to full size HDMI. Other than that, the base model doesn't come with a battery or any sort of battery power supply to plug it into a wall unless you get their more expensive bundle package. When it comes to resolution and brightness of these monitors, they actually have a pretty significant difference. The Ninja V is true HD, so it's 1920 by 1080p resolution, whereas the small HD is only 1280 by 720 resolution. The Ninja V is also brighter than the small HD where it's 1000 nits, whereas the small HD is only 800 nits. It's not a massive difference, but it definitely helps when you're shooting outside. When it comes to filming out in direct sunlight, a lot of times you want to use a monitor hood. Now I have the small HD focus monitor hood that's made of plastic and it doesn't break down in any way. So it does kind of stink to store and travel with. It has a really nice snug fit to it. When it comes to the Ninja V's hood, I don't actually own it yet because it's around a hundred bucks to buy, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. Next, we're gonna look at color reproduction. So I've never actually put these side by side. And what I'm doing right now is I'm running a loop from my A7S into the Atomos Ninja V, and then I'm looping it back out and bringing it into the small HD. And there's actually a difference in the color. The Atomos Ninja V looks much warmer. Now it's probably hard for you to tell everything about this image is much cooler and this is much warmer. So I find that to be kind of interesting and that could definitely affect the way that you do your white balancing. I can also see that the blacks in this are much deeper and darker and everything just looks more saturated. When it comes to battery life, the Ninja V absolutely eats up battery life. Now it's nowhere near as bad as some of the original Atomos recorders like the Shogun or the Inferno. Those destroy battery. I found that this actually lasts about three hours on one of the Sony NPF batteries. Now, because this is a recorder as well and not just a monitor, it of course eats up a lot more battery and it actually has a fan inside that you can just barely subtly hear. I've never had this affect my audio in any way. You'd have to have it right next to a microphone for it to get picked up. Now, using the same battery on the small HD, I found that it does last a lot longer. The Ninja V gets really hot. Whereas with the small HD, no heat at all. There are a couple different ways to power each of the monitors. When you get the Ninja V, it actually comes with the battery eliminator, like I said earlier, and then plug it into an outlet and run all day on this. So if you're shooting in a studio, that's really nice to have, and I'm happy that they include that. Now, when you get the small HD, it doesn't come with a battery or any way to plug it into an outlet. You actually have to get a little Sony NPF battery like this that has a cable that comes out the back and then you can plug it into a wall. Something that I like to do when I'm using the Ninja V on a larger built out rig is actually power it with the battery eliminator and then I take a D-tap cable, plug it in and then plug it right into the side of my V-mount battery. That way I get hours and hours of battery life. Another nice feature of the small HD is the ability to actually power your camera off of it. 
So if you get the right power adapter cable, you can plug it right in and power it much longer using these Sony NPF batteries instead of the small little batteries that you use for your camera. Both monitors have a standard headphone jack, so you can plug in and monitor your audio and make sure that you're getting a nice clean signal. Now let's take a look at the HDMI ports on each of these monitors. Starting with the Ninja V again, it has two full-size HDMI ports on the side. I love having two full-size HDMI ports because it is a much more sturdy connection than the teeny tiny micro HDMI, which I find so wobbly and can just lose connection very easily. Now, I also love the ability to completely loop out so that I can go to a wireless transmitter like I'm doing right now. When you're using the small HD, you have to use the proprietary HDMI cables that small HD sells because this little bit here has to fit perfectly inside of there because there's little pieces of plastic on either side that really prevent any other cable from fitting. If you try to use a more generic HDMI cable from Amazon or something, it can look very similar, like it'll fit in there. Like they look super similar. That should fit, right? Well, it doesn't. It's still just a few millimeters too big to actually fit inside there. So you're really out of luck. Now on the small HD, there is no other HDMI out. So if you need to loop out to a wireless transmitter, you're completely out of luck. Now let's talk about the mounting options on each of these monitors. Starting with the Ninja V, you have quarter 20 threads on the top and the bottom, and there's actually an adapter built inside there so that you can unscrew this and get a three quarter inch thread on the top and bottom. On the small HD, you have a quarter 20 thread on the top and the bottom, but no three quarter inch. And then of course you have the threads on the side so that you can add the tilt arm to it. And that is also a quarter 20 thread. Sometimes I take this L bracket for granted because it's just so easy to slip it onto a cold shoe. And then if I'm filming myself, flip it around and immediately I can see myself. And of course it has the cold shoe mount on the side here. So you can mount a light or a shotgun microphone or a wireless lavalier. Now let's talk about the build quality of each of these monitors. The Ninja V is made of aluminum alloy. So this really nice metal chassis feels really good and solid in the hand. I feel like this thing can really take a beating and these little bevels that stick out on the sides help protect the ports and keep them from getting smashed by anything because they're just beveled in a little bit and I really enjoy that. Now the small HD is really made of an all rubberized plastic and it actually feels really good and solid too. I'm not worried about it breaking or anything like that, but it definitely doesn't feel as solid because it's not made of metal. So the Ninja V is actually 12.7 ounces, whereas the small HD is less than half that is 6.1 ounces. Now where that becomes important is when you're actually mounting these to a gimbal. This can feel like a much heavier setup on a gimbal, especially when you're holding it and running around all day, whereas this is much, much lighter. Now the overall software capabilities on each of them are pretty similar, but it's their operating system that is set up pretty different. On the small HD, all your buttons pop up on the side here on the Ninja V, they all pop along the bottom and the top. Of course, they're both fully touchscreen monitors, but the small HD really has an advantage because it allows you to pinch to zoom in and out really quickly and then move your finger around and zoom in and just really make sure that you have your image in focus. And I absolutely love that. And I think we're all really used to that feature because of our smartphones. Now, when it comes to doing that on the Ninja V, you can't. There's no ability to pinch to zoom, which I think is just a total failure. And there's no way that they can't add that to the operating system in an update. And I'm not sure why they haven't done it yet. So if you want to zoom in and get your focus, you actually have to go into the menu and you can tap on this little one-to-one -one magnifying glass and then move your finger around on this box or the two times zoom and that's it. There's no other options for zooming in and out. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the menu settings on each of these monitors, because there are a lot of things you can do, but I wanna quickly show you some of the things that they do similar and a little bit different. So let's start off with your zebras. You can just tap them 
on and off here on the Ninja V. And then on the small HD, you actually have the ability to make multiple screens. So I have a couple different screens set up depending on what I wanna do and you can quickly swipe between them. So if I wanna see my zebras, I can just swipe over and my zebras are on, on this screen. And of course I can tap on the side here and quickly turn them on and off as well. On both monitors, of course, you have your false colors. And again, I have that on a separate screen here on the small HD, so you just swipe over to it and you can turn it on or off from the side here also. Now, if you wanna monitor your audio levels, you can tap down here and you can see all the full audio levels and different channels on the Ninja V, which is a nice feature of the Ninja V because you can actually bring in eight different channels. Whereas on the small HD, you can only bring in one channel, but of course you can easily monitor your audio levels there on the bottom. Make sure you're not peaking and you're actually getting good sound. Another advantage of the Ninja V is that you can actually turn the decibels up or down. So if you're getting too little, you can turn up the gain, or if it's too loud, you can turn it down in your recorder. Now, if you're gonna be shooting in a flat picture profile like S-Log, it can be really nice to shoot with 3D LUTs on, which you can do in both of the monitors. So on the Ninja V, you can simply tap on this little side button here and go into LUTs, and then it has eight different spots where you can just quickly switch between LUTs that you can load right into the monitor. Then on the small HD, I added a little shortcut and they call it looks. So you tap on that there and you can quickly turn it on or off here. And of course you can choose whichever one you need, turn up the intensity of it, which I think is very nice because maybe you don't want the full LUT coming in and its full ability. You can slide it down to 50% or less or all the way up. And then of course you can choose which one you have the small HD comes with a couple internal ones. So they have S-Log to Rec 709. So S-Log 2, S-Log 3 to Rec 709. And they have them for Airy, Canon, Blackmagic, a couple different default ones here that you can quickly choose from. And of course, you can load in your own custom LUTs as well. You just need the SD card inserted. Now both monitors do have a battery indicator, but I actually prefer the one on the Ninja V because it shows you the real status of the battery and you can see how much is left and it actually gives you a nice little animation. And it'll kind of pop up and give you a warning when it's low. Whereas on the small HD, the only thing it gives you is these little red letterings that say battery low in the top right. But I can't actually tell, is it half, is it quarter, is there only an eighth, like how much battery life is left. It doesn't give you any warnings besides battery low. So you never know like when's it gonna shut off and then it just shuts off and it's over and you don't really know. Whereas I get a lot more warnings on the Ninja V when my battery is running low and going to die. So I can prepare and it doesn't turn off in the middle of a shoot. Let's talk though quickly about reviewing a clip after you film something. So to review a clip when you film something on the Ninja V, because it records it internally, you have to tap the play button here and then the Ninja V actually power cycles over to basically the other side so that you can review a clip. So it does take longer to actually get into playback mode here. And when you wanna go back to recording, you have to tap record and you'll see the screen go dark and it'll basically power cycle back over to the record side. Whereas on the small HD, if you wanna watch a clip back, you actually just use the buttons on your camera that you would normally use to watch playback and then it plays back on the camera. And when you're ready to record again, just press the record button or whatever you need to do on your camera to go back into record mode. So I found that when I'm doing run and gun and I just wanna quickly watch a clip back, it's much faster to do on the small HD, whereas it takes a lot more time and effort on the Ninja V. Some people may say that comparing these two monitors side by side isn't really comparing apples to apples. And in a way it isn't but it's really up to you on which monitor you need. The Atomos is of course an external recorder. So if you're using a camera that allows you to get even better high quality recordings with an external recorder, this may be something for you. Like if you're using the new EOS R or the Nikon Z6, but if you don't need that, using something that is just a monitor and not an internal recorder 
may be something for you. But if the internal codec is not good on your camera and you wanna get the full ProRes 422 record capabilities, even if your camera does 4K internally, it's nice to have this external recorder because you get ProRes Lite, 422, and high quality. Now, of course, switching between those, you can see that your record time changes drastically. Now, a feature of the small HD's operating system that really makes it stand apart is something I already mentioned a little bit before, but it's this control center. So when you pinch out, you can quickly get to all different displays. You can add a new page, and then you can tap on the side here and add all different new tools. So if you wanna set up some crosshairs or different aspect ratios, you can tap through and do that really easily. And there's actually more aspect ratios available here than there are on the Ninja V, which is pretty limited in its ability to do different aspect ratios. Now, I love that about the Small HD, you can do one-to-one. -one. So if you're shooting like a little Instagram ad, or you wanna do vertical video, you can switch it into the um, nine by 16 and make sure that you're getting the right aspect ratio for vertical video. So I think that those features are really nice to have. And continuing on, you can add as many tools as you want. So you can add a zebra, your waveforms, vector scopes, peaking, all those types of features, audio meters, everything into a custom page and then you can easily swipe between your different custom pages with your different monitoring capabilities on them. If I were to choose between the operating systems on them, Atom OS versus the Small HD OS, definitely Small HD wins. If you're doing a lot of run and gun shooting, vlogging, YouTube videos where you wanna be able to flip the screen around quickly and just review the clips that you're taking, the Small HD is probably a really good way to go for you. But if you're doing a lot of filmmaking and you wanna get the absolute best resolutions in ProRes and have the best high quality footage possible, then the Ninja V and that internal recorder is probably the best option for you. I think both of them are really fantastic monitors and I really love and use each of them all the time. And guys, if you wanna learn how to light and shoot better videos, hit subscribe right now. I have a ton more videos coming out and shooting, editing, everything like that. All right, I'll see you in the next video.